guys, welcome back to the Independent Investor Channel, another core fundamental investing video on meeting financial thresholds. If you're going to move through the different scales of wealth in your life, you're going to want to identify what those milestones are. A lot of fa people fail to have even $500 of invested capital put away and even fewer reach that milestone of getting up to $10,000 of invested capital. And this takes a mindset. And if you have the right mindset to deploy in your strategy, it will be the very beginning of something much more grand in your life when you start to think and grow rich in your life, as opposed to what I feel a lot of people do, live paycheck to paycheck, and it speaks in the numbers. There are statistics that are staggering that a $400 unannounced expenditure would put 50% of households in financial ruin. Guys, we can do better than that. And this exercise aims to walk you through the identification of the 11 steps to becoming a millionaire. And you can do it. You can do it. The great separator between those that achieve greater wealth in their life and those that do not are put quite simply those folks that identify mentally and identify it as a high priority in their life and something that is worth pursuing. Here's the backbone and fundamental of, of it as it breaks down. And you don't have to be an investor at all to resonate with this message. You're going to want to stick through through the totality of this. And within a 10-minute offering, you're going to understand the psychology of each of these different milestones because this is in response to a lot of people who tune into my message and they're like, Ryan, I want to make millions. How can I get there? Well, you need to make your first thousand first, okay? And a lot of people sit back and they're confused at that statement. And I don't understand why it's so difficult, okay? But I've earmarked these 11 steps to a millionaire and I've covered this in the chronicle of the, of the channel. And for you guys that are just starting out in investing, this is your total overall net worth, okay? As you expand your portfolio and perhaps maybe introduce additional buckets in your portfolio, well, then each and every one of those buckets can take on its own strategic goal. For example, I've got goals uh, for different portfolio accounts that I have that are meeting and surpassing some of these financial milestones exclusively to that account itself. Now, it all goes into contributing to the greater whole when we're looking at our total portfolio value but there's a greater, deeper psychology in understanding these milestones. Number one, when you meet these thresholds, psychologically it's a win for you. But number two, when we identify these financial thresholds, we need to earmark how much needs to be contributed as it relates to the number of months necessary to get up to that specific financial threshold. And those two things, amount and time, coupled together with a successful mindset is the very key in laying the very foundation and mindset that you'll need uh, to pursue and stare down and eventually meet these financial thresholds. Now, the first couple I'm going to breeze through, 500, you can meet that o overnight, okay? Now, if it takes you a couple months and you're a beginning investor and you're saving $20 a month, that's fine. You'll build up eventually to that. The question becomes not that you can't do it, but how long until you do it, all right? And this is what separates me from a lot of people. The very power in going from a non-investor to a first investor is why I earmark this 500 as being a paramount in your entry to something greater in your financial evolution, okay? Now, a lot of people would tune into the channel and out of somewhat of an arrogance or somewhat of a surplus capital, maybe they make six figures, they're like, Ryan, I got that, we're good to go, let's move on, okay? To those people, I tip my hat, and I would also challenge you as to why you haven't already progressed through some of these levels of, of financial wealth uh, and levels of wealth uh, on your own accord, okay? If you need some coaching and tutelage to identify these, um, that's great and plenty, but I think a lot of people who make surplus capital, they get up to twenty-five, five, even $10,000, and they start earmarking all of those different expenditures in life that they can start to you know, spend those dollars on. Make no mistake about it, guys. These are meant to account for your invested dollars only. 
okay? Invested dollars only. You have savings capital, you have surplus capital, you have money to live, you have money to eat, you have money for sunken cost, bills, rent, overhead, etc. These are invested dollars. Treat them as such. Dare I might suggest that they are sacred. And before you would ever, ever rationalize touching your sacred invested dollars, you better be pretty close to, if not one step, to being on the street. Because this is the very dedication that I'm looking for from investors to invest for the long term and weather storms of volatility and not justify every expenditure under the moon when you start to meet some of these. Because I tell you what, when you get up to the $100,000 threshold, don't you think that it could be somewhat tempting to go out there and buy the next BMW or identify that next thing that you've always wanted or had some grand illusion in your mind to go purchase? It, it can be easier to fall off tilt, and that's why I suggest that it's very important to earmark the successes as you build up to those amounts. Because if you, if you bestow somebody $100,000 of wealth, chances are they're going to go and lose it. And that's the very reason why, is that they, has, that they have not built up to that amount and appreciated what it took to get to all of the subsequent levels uh, in the investing pyramid. So 500, it can be done overnight if you need a couple of months to build it up, however long it, it takes. It's irrespe ir irrelevant how much time it takes, but rather that you take the mindset to say, you know what, Ryan earmarks $500 of, of starting capital as being that, that entry to the market, get it started. You can get there. $1,000, same idea. $1,000 is a doubling from the first level. That first $1,000 of invested capital, these preliminary stages of investing are very, very important to earmark to get somebody excited about a quantifiable goal that they can sink their teeth into and say, I can, rather than the response I get all the time about the deficiencies and the barriers to entry and why so many people cannot participate in financial markets, I'm here to tell you that you can, and $1,000 is achievable. Once you get that 500, you're gonna have that 500 working for you, some capital appreciation. Maybe it does digress a little bit on you, no problem. You're funding that up over time in pursuance of that next financial goal, which is number two on the list. The next is 2,500, which accounts for more than a doubling uh, of your uh, $1,000 amount, uh, and it does suggest uh, some br pretty good capital appreciation. 2,500 is nothing to scoff at. Uh, and in route to 5,000, uh, 5, which represents multiple doubling cycles in your account, is going to take a little bit of time on your, uh, your uh, account to fund these accounts, to maybe strategically fund. Maybe you want to double up on your initial of 500 and double down on another 500 in pursuance of that. The rules with these financial thresholds is such that you can reach them in a number of different ways. And there's nothing to suggest that you can't just manufacture the funding enough to get up to these levels, okay? Those are just using hard dollars to get up to those levels. The longer it's going to take to get to these levels is the more reliant you are upon capital appreciation to get to those levels rather than you help to infuse those dollars into the account and get that baseline because we're trying to establish that snowball right on the onset and the quicker you can get to that snowball, the quicker those dividends can render, the quicker the snowball effect, and the quicker the rule of 72 can take effect for that compounding effect that's gonna take uh, hold over your money. It's not gonna be as noticeable in these preliminary stages of wealth building. And that's why a lot of people get, they get frustrated uh, and they get tuned off of, of, of investing. And they think, you know what? I wanna buy that 100 inch TV. I can get immediate satisfaction out of this. What is Ryan talking about? You know, it's taken me two to three years to build up to 5,000, and where am I? I can't retire on 5,000. That is the very fallacy in investing that prohibits a lot of invest, uh, investors out there from achieving great wealth in their life because the great wealth is not achieved on the onset. It is achieved on the back end, okay? So as we approach that 5,000 and indefinitely that $10,000, this is what separates those investors that uh, really integrate it into their life, make it part of their life, adjust their budget to achieve something greater than that 10,000. But you're talking about one, two, three, four, and up to five steps, five steps to 11 steps to becoming a millionaire. You're almost halfway through the steps and you've got $10,000 of capital wealth put away. And this is the very critical point. The $10,000 mark is one that I earmark all the time and I share with the YouTube audience is something that I remember wholeheartedly meeting because I felt like there was no way 
that I could ever achieve that $10,000 of invested capital. It seemed unachievable. And when I did achieve it, it opened up the gates of realization for me that any amount is achievable. Now, since then, I've surpassed the 100,000, the 250,000, and the 500,000, and I'm en route to that million dollar mark, okay? Because of the fact that psychologically, I proved to myself that you didn't have to be wealthy to be considered wealthy, okay? Wealth is not bestowed upon people. It is earned, especially when you don't come from wealth. This is how you break down the psychology of wealth and achieve those milestones no matter when they're gonna happen, okay? Let's be real. I'm confident enough to stare down that $1 million mark even though I'm a realist and I'm perfectly acceptable of the fact that if I run out of time in this life to meet that million dollar mark, at least I have it earmarked and I am in pursuance of that wealth and my day-to-day -day activities, my savings discipline is in line with achieving that end, okay? So that is super important to understand. I don't need to make it tomorrow. I don't need to make it 10 years down the line. But inevitably, if I'm making every decision that I can possibly make that is in line with meeting my strategic goals, then I can sleep well at night. If and when it happens, it happens, and I'm perfectly okay with that. Moving on from the 10,000 mark is the $25,000 mark, $50,000 mark, and the $100,000 mark. This is what I consider to be no man's land. No man's land is really, really tough because 25, 50, nor $100,000 in my assessment is not adequate to retire upon in today's age if you want to maintain a lifestyle that you've grown accustomed to. And this could be a very, very dangerous phase because you could have rushed through the first five phases to 10 and perhaps maybe identified how easy it is to make money in the stock market. This can be very, very dangerous and this is where you start to think that you can duplicate those efforts by forgetting the hard work that it took to get up there and this is where it takes the most perseverance to keep your eye on the prize and keep your eye on those upper tier of financial thresholds to, to, to meet. And guys, to be honest with you, if I can impart, I don't remember when I met 100,000 and it seemed like it was shortly thereafter that I met the 250 and even shorter than that that I met the $500,000 threshold. And if I stay true on that philosophy in understanding that that, hundred, that hundred, uh, $1 million threshold uh, after getting north of 500,000 is going to be inevitably in my future with the rule of 72, if I can maintain a seven to 10% rate of return in the market, I'm all the way through the first 10 of the 11 steps to a million dollars. But I was never one of those people that demanded that I make a million dollars overnight. I was never one of those people that were unhappy until I met that end. I'm a very happy person now. I would be a happy person whether, I met, I, whether or not I met those thresholds or not. And I think people really need to take a page out of my playbook and disconnect from their money. Earmark those achievable milestones on the onset and that's what the masses need to do. They don't need to be focused in on making those millions and be unwilling to go through the preliminary in the trenches deliberations, both mentally and physically, to take those hard dollars, those sacred dollars, and devote them to a strategy in, like with the, in line with the framework that I've disclosed to you. Now, guys, if you appreciate the message coming through, I'd invite you to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, leave your comments at the bottom of this video if it's struck an accord with you guys. We're looking to empower one investor at a time by identifying those tried and true fundamentals in investing that bottom line work. There's so much on the landscape that can misconstrue how to get involved in the stock market and it can lead you astray. Guys, this can define your financial thresholds into your future and it can help you, guide you along your path to something so much greater in this life. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into the message and good luck in your investment future.